for tuning into The Boardroom, where we highlight important updates, discussions, and decisions from each monthly Atlanta Public Schools board meeting. I am Cherise Darby, and this is an inside view of The Boardroom from the July 1st, 2013 meeting. Chief Operating Officer Larry Hoskins presented a special purpose local option sales tax update before the board at the July 1st meeting. According to Hoskins, to date, APS has collected $73.2 million, which is 94.5% of projected receipts. Hoskins also gave an update on the status of construction projects throughout the district. Current district projects include construction at Mary Lynn Elementary, Sylvan Hills Middle School, and Springdale Park Elementary School. Chief Financial Officer Chuck Burbridge presented the financial forecast before the board at the July 1st meeting. According to Burbridge, the district has revised its estimate of revenues, which shows an increase in the ending balance to $70.5 million. Additionally, the district has seen strength in property taxes, which includes tax on automobiles. Earlier this year, Burbridge spoke about the changes to Georgia's automobile taxes. The school district has also noticed strength in the real estate transfer tax as properties are selling. There will still be financial activity in July, and the books for the FY13 school year will officially close in August. The Atlanta Board of Education adopted the FY14 general fund budget for Atlanta Public Schools by a 6-3 vote during a special legislative meeting on Thursday, June 27th. The original proposed budget of $592 million increased to $595.1 million to pay for 50 additional teachers that will impact APS's average class sizes across the district. Well, we're pleased that the board has approved the general fund and all all other fund uh, budgets, uh, special revenue fund, debt service, and capital budgets. Um, the uh, most immediate thing we've done is, based on those approvals, we have loaded budgets for departments to start spending immediately. Uh, so, yeah, as you know, the fiscal year started July 1, so these funds are available for to the departments uh, for their purposes. and. Uh, So now what finance is doing is we're moving towards uh, closing fiscal year uh, 13. Uh, The fiscal year closes on June 30th, but there are still transactions that come in after that date that we will have to process, and uh, we will finally close the books uh, officially in uh, mid-August and then get ready for uh, the two audits that we are conducted on our financial reporting. Um, later this year, so so that's the uh, the main events. You know, the boards approved the budgets. We have the budgets loaded, so the departments and schools can spend uh, the resources that have been allocated to them, and HR can start recruiting for all the positions that are included in the budget. And then we're we're closing the uh, fiscal year 13 to uh, get the accurate picture of where we ended the fiscal years uh, financially. Special revenue and construction budgets were addressed at the Atlanta Board of Education meeting on Monday, July 1st. The board adopted the special revenue, capital projects, and debt service budgets for fiscal year 2014 at the July 1st meeting. The special revenue budget outlines the estimated revenues and expenditures of special revenue grants and projects for the fiscal year 2014 budget. The estimated special revenue budget totals $130,602,048.67 for fiscal year 2014. Since revenue equals expenditures, self-balancing the net cost to the district is zero. The capital projects budget outlines revenues and expenditures of capital projects for the fiscal year 2014 budget. The capital projects budget totals $6,352,978. And the fiscal year 2014 debt service budget outlines the revenues and expenditures of debt service for the fiscal year 2014 budget. The debt service budget totals $1,930,629. Pursuant to the Georgia State Board of Education's February 20, 2013 action to grant local education agencies exemptions or waivers from all statutory and regulatory class size maximums for the 2013-14 school year, school districts seeking to utilize this exemption are required to submit a local board resolution with a list of exemptions to the Georgia Department of Education. At the July 1st meeting, the board presented and approved a resolution that allows flexibility for Atlanta public schools to adjust class sizes beyond the state maximums as needed. Staff will continue to make every effort to maintain actual class sizes that are below the resolution maximums. 
Results of the 2013 Criterion Reference Competency Test show that Atlanta public schools increased proficiency in 21 out of 30 grade and content area assessments compared to the district's 2012 performance. When comparing 2013 to 2012 CRCT assessments, the following is a summary of APS's students' performance by content area. The percent of students scoring proficient and above in reading, mathematics, and science increased in five out of six grade levels. The percent of students scoring proficient and above in social studies increased in all six grade levels. When comparing 2013 to 2012 CRCT assessments by grade level, APS experienced increases in the percentage of students performing within the exceeding expectations category in the following content areas. Grade three, reading, mathematics, and social studies. Grade four, all five content areas. Grade five, reading, mathematics, and social studies. Grade six, all five content areas. Grade seven, reading, English language arts, and social studies. And grade eight, all five content areas. Proficiency rates in English language arts did not increase in any grade level. Five areas that stayed the same were grade five, English language arts. Grade six, reading in English language arts. Grade seven, English language arts, and grade seven, science. Four areas that decreased were grade three, English language arts and mathematics, grade four, English language arts, grade eight, English language arts. The Georgia Department of Education will make school level 2013 CRCT results available no later than July 10th. Uh, in fact, we showed growth in 21 of the 30 uh, grade and subject combinations, and that is a growth rate uh, faster uh, than the state uh, average. Most of this growth uh, was in math. Uh, we still have some work to do in English language arts, uh, which fell slightly compared uh, with last year. Uh, the gains, I believe, are real. Uh, last year, uh, we implemented a stronger test security measures and an automatic trigger mechanism to investigate schools that show extraordinary gains. Uh, we did complete our review of 2012 schools that had shown extraordinary gain, uh, and we found no unusual wrong to right uh, erasures, uh, for example, as well as they met the rest of our uh, protocols. We will not be able to do the 2013 scores uh, until we get uh, more data uh, from the state. Um, so far, and again, I want to remind you that our test security uh, efforts have in fact been commended by the very same agency that uncovered wrongdoing uh, several years ago. And let me quote the Governor's Office of Student Achievement. Test security measures help restore a standard of ethics and integrity to APS and confidence in test scores for the benefits uh, of its students. And I believe that we are in fact moving uh, in the right direction both procedurally as well as uh, academically. The board also approved a revision to the Policy DC for final read. At the June 5, 2013 meeting of the board's Policy Review Committee, the committee recommended to the board a revision to Policy DC for its consideration. The revision would change the board's legal level of control of the budget. The revision required board approval for transfers of appropriations within divisions that exceed $1 million or 2% of the total division budget, whichever is less. Board approval would also be required for all transfers of appropriations between the budgets of divisions. The revision was accepted for first read, then members of the board's policy review committee considered comparative research and peer school district policies and the preference of the administration and made additional revision recommendations to the policy. The final approved changes clarify the policy language, set the threshold for board approval of budget transfers at 5% of a division's total budget or $1 million, whichever is less, and provide for emergency budget transfers. At the July 1st meeting, the board authorized the superintendent to enter into an agreement with the City of Atlanta to provide physical security, investigative detectives, and 24-hour alarm response services. This agreement shall be for one year, with four one-year available options to be exercised at the discretion of the superintendent. The school detectives unit is an official specialized unit within the City of Atlanta Police Department that has the primary responsibility of addressing public safety issues at APS middle schools, high schools, and other property owned by the school district. Officers work with Atlanta Public Schools security personnel and community agencies individually and cooperatively in the detection and elimination of unlawful or harmful conditions, traffic hazards, or other conditions which could endanger the safety and welfare of students 
and staff. These services are provided on a contract basis by the Atlanta Police Department School Detective Section with a force comprised of one major, one lieutenant, seven sergeants, five investigators, and 59 officers. The Atlanta Police Department has primary jurisdiction in the city of Atlanta and is therefore considered a single source. The estimated annual cost of this agreement is $5,558,457. The board also approved the APS tuition rates for the 2013-14 school year. The Atlanta Board of Education Policy, JBCBA, provides that children who are non-residents may attend Atlanta public schools upon the payment of tuition, provided that a non-resident student does not displace a resident student. The per-pupil tuition rates recommended for the 2013-14 school year are general education, $10,228, special education, $14,069 plus cost for additional services based on individual needs. Evening high school, $755 per class for non-residents, $196 per class for residents over the age of 21, and free for residents between the ages of 16 and 21. These rates reflect the current year estimated local costs per student. This offsets the cost of out-of-district students who attend Atlanta public schools. The board continues to do work regarding the search for a permanent superintendent. And, you know, current superintendent will be here for this school year, uh, but he has already made it clear, and we as a board have made it clear, we'll be hiring a new superintendent. So that process has begun. Uh, the search committee has met on several occasions. They received significant input from the community, and we would expect the full recruitment process to start at the beginning of, of August. And so, you know, this uh, board meeting kind of closed out this year and we're now beginning our work for next year. The Superintendent Search Committee of the Atlanta Board of Education convened a committee meeting at 5 o'clock p.m. on Monday, June 24, 2013. The committee discussed the progress that has been made regarding the superintendent search. The Superintendent Search Committee also held a community meeting at 6 p.m. on Monday, June 24, 2013. This meeting facilitated an opportunity for community members and stakeholders to provide additional feedback regarding the profile and qualities for the next Atlanta Public Schools superintendent. Remember, the first day of school is Wednesday, August 7th for traditional schools and Monday, July 15th for year-round schools. Please view the flyer on the screen and help spread the word so that we can make sure students are registered and ready for school on day one. The district will also host district-wide open houses this year at all schools on Monday, August 5th. High school will be held from 1 to 3 p.m. Middle school will be held from 3 to 5 p.m. And elementary school will be held from 5 to 7 p.m. During the month of June, more than 400 individuals filled First Iconium Baptist Church for a Support the Good rally on behalf of educators, students, and parents of Metropolitan Atlanta. Organized by an independent grassroots coalition, the rally marked the first time four school superintendents gathered together to take part in the community's gracious show of support for public education. Superintendents Errol Davis of Atlanta Public Schools, Lavinia Jackson of Clayton County Schools, Michael Thurman of DeKalb County Schools, and Robert Avosa of Fulton County Schools talked about the strides being made by their respective school systems. Board Chair Ruby McDaniel, Vice Chair Byron Amos, and Board Member Brenda Muhammad were among the community activists and elected officials in attendance at the rally. Stakeholders are given an opportunity to speak publicly to the board at each monthly board meeting. Several of the public comments of the July 1st meeting focused on the district's international exchange program, Washington Small Schools, class sizes, and the Atlanta Classical Academy Charter Petition. Let's take a brief look at a few of the night's public comments. Good evening. My name is Danielle Nix, and I am the mother of two Grady High School students who benefited directly from having foreign exchange students integrated into their high school experience. As a family, we have both hosted students and we've, hosted, we've been hosted by families around the globe. We feel like we have developed lifelong international friends from Germany, Spain, Mexico, France, and Italy. And as a, re as a direct result of the, um, experiencing the exchange students from Grady. Upon hearing about the possibility of the exchange students um, not being accepted any longer, I was terribly disappointed and very disheartened. And I just wanted to come up um, briefly and thank you guys for all of the work that went into the budget that was passed last Thursday. I know all of you guys spent a lot of time on it and, um, you know, 
I guess in the end, we, we didn't get everything that we wanted, but I do think that the budget moved towards getting more resources to the classroom, and I want to thank you guys for that. I'm here to support the closing of small schools at Booker T. Washington High School. While I understand that parents individualizing this decision about their students and the ranking and about what about the other students, the population of the students you will hear about is less than 10 percent. What about the other 90 percent? Are we just warehousing these students until they turn 18? Greater than 50 percent are not graduating or going to secondary schools. This current administration and small schools did not cut it with AYP and they're not doing anything with the current, with the current measurements. This administration individually and collectively has not succeeded in building Washington as a school where parents, students want to come. My name is Ms. Johnson Jelsa. I'm a teacher at Washington High School. Um, I've always wanted to be a part of Washington. I volunteered there 10 years ago for free and I fell in love. I fell in love with the tradition. I fell in love with the pride. And I'm here today because I need you to make a decision. It's time to make a decision. The confusion is killing us. The kids, the students, the parents, the alumni, the teachers, we need a decision to be made. It's getting out of control. At our last community meeting, it was bad. A student got up to speak and Mr. Amos had to interject because people were being disrespectful. It's causing a lot of tension between all of us and that's not how it should be. We should be one. So whatever decision you make, it needs to be made soon and stick with it. Don't change it. And my hope is that you don't do it in January. If you do it, do it in August. I saw an email that went out to people that was for this August. Don't do it in the middle of the year. If you're going to choose this August, do it this August. If you're going to do it next August, do it next August. Don't do it in January, but make a decision and stick with your decision. As a proud APS graduate of the former Charles Lincoln Harper High School, now Harper Archer Middle School, I stand before you as a member of the Harper Archer Middle School Community Partners. We are alumni, parents, Carrier Heights and Adamsville churches, businesses, planetarian scientists, and other supporters. For the record, our grassroots organization wants to thank APS staff for their support of our efforts to help us return academic excellence to this great school and community in historic Carrier Heights. Specifically, because you always hear the negative stuff, we want to um, thank Ms. Karen Walden, Alva Hardy, McCall Hunt Marunga, and Ms. LaShondra butler Burtz. As we continue to move forward to help you help our kids become the best that they can be as productive members of this community. My name is Mark Carlson. I'm on the board of Atlanta Classical Academy and I recognize we're not on your agenda tonight, but we have some people here and we thought it would still be worthwhile to, to address you. I have two boys at Jackson Elementary. Uh, my wife is the outgoing PTA president at Jackson and I coach both of my boys in lacrosse. Um, the board of Atlanta Classical will continue to work to provide public school choice all through Atlanta. And we're excited to, to, um, to partner with APS to continue to improve our application and to get the best possible um, outcome for Atlanta Classical. So we want to thank you for your ac accessibility so far, your thoughtful feedback on our application and your engagement. And we, we look forward to continue to work with you. Thank you very much. Board Chair Ruby McDaniel says the board has a lot of upcoming work around the superintendent search and finalizing preparations for the 2013-14 school year. Listen to Ruben's remarks regarding the July 1st meeting as he recaps important moments and outlines key objectives for the board moving forward. One of the other action items was related to the budgets. We, we, passed, it, we passed a policy, D.C., that uh, means that the administration, as they go through the year, if they have significant changes in spending versus the budget, they will come back to the board for approval. And that gives a balance of oversight from the board perspective to make sure that no significant changes in programming are made without uh, our making sure they fit with our strategic plan, but also allow the superintendent, of course, to have the autonomy to day-to-day -day make adjustments in the budget as the you know, various items come up. And so that was a, a significant policy that we passed. We feel, feel very good about that. Uh, we also started construction of four, uh, four schools and passed the contractors for those. And so 
uh, around the district, including uh, E. Rivers and Mary Lynn and Sylvan uh, Middle School. We'll see construction starting very soon on uh, renovations and in some cases total rebuilds. So that's very exciting as well. I think, you know, we're starting today, July 2nd, with a uh, new school year, uh, new fiscal calendar, fiscal year. So really that last board meeting of the year is always one where you finish the budget and do those things we need to. We now move on to some big tasks we have for the coming year. And so, you know, this uh, board meeting kind of closed out this year, and we're now beginning our work for next year. Be sure to tune in each month for information regarding the Atlanta Board of Education and important agenda items from monthly board meetings. The next board meeting will be held on August 12, 2013 at the Center for Learning and Leadership, located at 130 Trinity Avenue, Atlanta, Georgia, 30303. Stakeholders who would like to provide public comments during the monthly Committee of the Whole meeting should contact the board office at least one hour prior to the scheduled start time of the Committee of the Whole meeting by calling 404-802-2200. Stakeholders wishing to address the board during the community meeting must register in person at the sign-in table from 5 o'clock p.m. to 5.50 p.m. on the day of the community meeting. Community members must list their names and agenda item or topic they wish to address, and they will be given up to two minutes to address the board. Thank you for tuning in. At APS, we are renewing our commitment to you.